If you will refer to your bulletins, you'll see some announcements there. Uh, our church cleanup, community day and open house, and roadside cleanup. All those are in your bulletin. The church cleanup time is 8 o'clock, okay? This afternoon, the Brotherhood and WMU have a meeting at 4 o'clock. And immediately following our worship service this morning, the res emergency response team will have a meeting here in the sanctuary for all those members. And if you would like to join that emergency response routine, uh, please stay here in the sanctuary for that meeting. On April the 16th, the student ministry and their parents will have another meeting concerning their trip this summer. Just be aware of that, April the 16th. And as you look around the outside, you can see the new landscape that was put in place. Uh, the rocks were put in place. But just like for parents to be aware, we know how tempting those rocks may be to our little kids. You know, man, I can throw that. Uh, I ain't going to say too much about the girls, but I know little boys will be tempted. And if they want to get in that bed and kick those rocks, they get out on the walkway, somebody could come along and slip and fall on those rocks. So please pay attention to that. It's, that's not a playground, okay? Next Saturday, Easter egg hunt. Our preschool department will be participating in this over at Cockerbury Farms in Fairmont on Pleasant View Church Road. Everyone is invited. Uh, preschoolers' admission is free. General admission is 2 o'clock. I mean, I'm sorry, $2. That begins at 10 a.m. Saturday morning. Okay. Easter programs. Tabernacle is having their program tonight beginning at 6 o'clock. The title of their program is Standing at the Judgment, Got to be Tried. Elrod Baptist Church on April the 8th beginning at 7.30. Uh, the title of theirs is They Shall Never Crucify Him Again. Brother Tim has an announcement. Can't hear you as well. No, I can't hear you as well. All right. I want to announce, you'll see these here flyers around. We're having a mother-daughter banquet. We want to do something special here for mothers and daughters. If mother's granddaughter, you know, we'll do something special. And it's uh, May 19th. We have a banquet. And, and ladies, we want you to dress up. It's going to kind of be an elegant affair. It ain't going to be blue jeans or pants, whatever. We want you to go on and, and get fixed up like it's like you're getting married or something. Wow. <laughs> so, so <laughs> oh. <laughs> So special for you. After you come to this one, uh, we want you to look forward to the next one. That's how good we want it to be for you. Good experience. Because we're going to have uh, uh, Dr. Lauren Clark Ash. I mean, Dr. Lauren Ashley Clark going to speak, say a little, a few words that night. We're going to have some fun stuff as well. And some pictures we're going to see there that night for mother and daughters and. Uh, we try to do it really nice for you. Food's going to be catered at night, and uh, you'll be served by uh, no women will be working. It'll be all men, males will be doing the serving and whatever that night. So we're going to have it fixed up special for you. And the tickets are ten dollars a piece, and you can get them from any mission team member. Uh, we just want you to fill out your name and turn that part off, and you keep the other part of it. Uh, so we'll have that record. But men, I don't want you to feel left out. I do have something for you as well. <laughs> we can't leave the men out. You know, I don't want to leave myself out. <laughs> June 16th, we have father-son uh, banquet as well that night. 
So guys, it's the same thing. We don't want your code blue jeans. We want you to step it up and not as well. So we can't leave guys out because you know without guys in the church, you know, what would it be? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but anyway, ten dollars a piece. Uh, any mission team member you can come and, and get a ticket. And uh, like I said, May nineteenth deadline. We we have May fourteenth, but the sooner the better because we since it's catered. We need to get a head count of what we need to purchase. Any questions, see a mission team member, come back and see me, whatever. But we want you there. We want you looking at your son's death. <laughs> right, thank you. Thank you, Brother Pam. Brother Tim, if I could add, I saw somebody said they don't have a son and they do have a daughter, but they don't have a son. And if you don't have a son or if you don't have a daughter, you don't have any grandchildren, we've got somebody that looks up to us. As a role model, so whoever that person may be, invite them. Yeah. Good point. Good point. And, and, and part of that as well, you know, uh, this is for the church. And if, if the mother comes here and you, your uh, the daughter comes here, mother somewhere else, that's still fine, or the vice versa. But we want this here to be something that you're going to really enjoy. And uh, the mission team is so we got together. And we wanted to start this, and we want this to be an annual thing for the church. Thank you, Brother Tim. Anyone, anyone else? Thank you, sister. Anyone else? Yes, Brother Eugene. Uh, CBM Camp Grace uh, registration is underway. So if we've got any children who want to go to Camp Grace this summer, if you will see me as soon as possible so we can go ahead and find out what the, the cost is going to be per child. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Israel said that when Jesus came down through Jerusalem about 2,000 years ago, but he's coming again. Aren't you excited about that? Those of you that are saved should be excited. Those of you that are not, make that today. Make that choice today. I invite you to sing this morning as we sing nothing but the blood. As we sing today about the blood of Jesus that takes away the sins of the world. the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is thy glow that makes me white as snow.
Remain standing as we sing, the blood will never lose its power.
Good morning. Good morning. Can I use some Robinson County language this morning? Go ahead. Y'all people sound good this morning. <laughs> Turn with me to your Bible's First Corinthians, please. Chapter 15. I'll get it right in a minute. <laughs> we need to laugh once in a while, don't we? Amen. Mike, I guess you're rubbing off on me, son. <laughs> Chapter 15 <laughs> and, and verse 37. One verse. I'm not taking it out of context. It's one verse. Well, I'm going to say to you in just a moment. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. That's the victory. Now I want to read a little poem here for you, if you don't mind. I want to share something. I didn't never realize this, Brother Carnegie. The day that you got saved, you enlisted in an army. Very day. Never thought about that. I tried to stay away from the military. Some stayed long time and some stayed short time. But we are soldiers in the kingdom of Christ. Amen. Few of us knew the day we became a Christian was the day we enlisted in the armed forces. To be a citizen of the kingdom of God is to be a soldier in its military, and brick belongs to those whose hearts are completely within God. We may wonder in the fallen world why often seems to elude us, but the problem is likely in our deficiency of victory. How we define victory? How do you define victory? We always win. Well, folks, let me tell you something this morning. Those of you that is Christians, that us as Christians, we're already winners. Amen. I don't have to wait till tomorrow, Brother Carnegie. I'm a winner today. Amen. And I'm going to be a winner as long as God is on his throne. Amen. And how long is that? Throughout all eternity. I may not even make it to captain or colonel or something like that, but I'm going to be victorious. Victory, we will be wounded at times, and eventually death comes to all. But for the faithful, these things never come at the wrong time. It's always the right time. God is right, God is true. And never without a promise. You'll read, I'm sure you do in your scriptures, God promised this, God promised that. And guess what's going to happen? His promise will come to fruit Christian. You can count on it. You can take that to the bank. The bank won't take it, but you can take it to the bank. That's a promise from God. It's not from me, it's God's word. A wise assessment of our struggles will always include the glorious facts. Almighty God, like fights on behalf of those whose hearts are his. We have a warrior that's fighting for us, brothers and sisters. I can't fight these battles on my own. I got to have help. And my help comes from above. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we look at the problem with the sense of defeat, we are not wise to the reality of God's power and his promises. We must always know who holds victory in his hand, and we must never, we must never, we must never 
lose heart because he's the victor. God won the victory. He was on the cross and said it was finished. It was done. We're all winners. Those of us that's born again in Christian. Any prayer, praise, prayer requests. Thank you. 
Any others? Yeah, I shall continue to remember Mark. He's he's still with us. Yeah. What is the purpose is, I don't know. <clears throat> but God knows. Yes. Pray for Mark. Pray for yourself. Pray for the church, our church family yes. folks. We need to get out of these walls and get out there. You know what's happening? People's lost, <laughs> people dying on their way to hell. We need to be telling them about it. Brother Don, if you'd take us to the throne of grace, I'd appreciate it, brother. Right. Uh, brother Don, let me make one more prayer request. Um, I want us to remember our, our children and our schools. Yes. We still have children bringing guns to school. Yes. And it's not somewhere else on the TV. It's right here in Robinson County. Yes. And it's just by the grace of God yes. that nothing has happened. And I'm not talking about empty guns. I'm talking about loaded guns. Yep. So I just want us this morning to remember remember that situation. Because, you know, we keep seeing it on TV. You know, but I pray, God, that it doesn't grace, you know, our doorsteps. But it, it's happening. It happened this past week. Um, so let's, let's just be in prayer about that. Let all hearts pray. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to come here, Lord, that as we come to worship, that not only do we praise your greatness, Lord, but we also have some requests today, Lord. Those requests include that our, our schools, Lord, that, that they need to be pr protected, that our, our love, the children that we love, we're, we're sending them off to school, and, and, and we, we want to know that they are safe, Lord, that that there's so many, so much evil in the world that, that there's so many spiteful people that, that would even do something as, as killing children that young, Lord. That, that the only way we could change is, is if we change through you, Lord. That we put our, our faith in you. That we continue to pray. That we continue to put you first in our lives, Lord. That we also want to, to remember those that, that were lost in this storm, Lord. Yes. Two storms that were almost hit back to back, Lord. That we... We lost some not only in Tennessee, but we lost some in Arkansas, Lord, that those families are, are suffering, those communities are destroyed, Lord, that I know that we come together through you, Lord, to rebuild those communities and, and to help those families that, that lost loved ones, Lord. We have people that are in our church today that, that are suffering either through having those that we love so much that are lost, Lord, that we ask you that that you continue to inspire us, to give us the courage, to give us the boldness, to create those bits in those people's lives, that we can show the goodness of God, His love, Lord. We also have those that are in our family that, that are sick, that are suffering from, from cancer or other diseases, Lord. I even saw someone this yesterday that, that was suffering from cancer but was still working um, at a store selling stuff, Lord. That I ask you that that you continue to touch them, to heal them, Lord, that only you and only you could heal those diseases, Lord. We have the, those that have lost loved ones just recently that, that have gone through some funerals and, and really are suffering and, and need your comfort, Lord. I just ask you to be there with them, Lord. I also ask you that, that your presence would be here today in today's service as, as our pastor comes up to preach the Lord of the word of God, Lord. I ask you that we all come here to give, Lord. I, I think that's why we come to worship, is to give to you, Jesus, that, that we give to you in song, we give to you in, in praise, we give to you in silence and yes. in solemnness, Lord, that we just here to serve you, to show you the love. I know that in return you will give us much blessings. Yes. I ask all this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <laughs> Well, we're going to do some songs today that uh, uh, represents Easter a week ahead of time. Next Sunday is um, the Easter play, so we're going to do our songs today. Worship with us on a song that says, Worthy is the Lamb.
Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you I know the first two songs was about the blood. This one is about the blood. And that's what it's all about is the blood, isn't it? Praise the Lord. Worship with us as we sing this blood. Amen.
that paid my way death its price and when it flowed down from the cross my sins were gone my sins forgot there is a grave that tried to hide this precious blood that gave me life. But in three days he breathed again and rose to stand in my defense. It heals the sin, the lonely fight. It has the power to free the bound. As chains they fall upon the ground, so pour it out to cleanse my soul. And let this liquid glory flow Because He lives to make me whole I owe my life Stand and worship with us on this course, would you? So I come to tell you He's alive To tell you that he derives every tear that falls. So I come to tell you that he saves, to shout and to proclaim that he's coming back for you. So I come to tell you he's alive, to tell you that he derives.
that He gave me life. But in three days He breathed again and rose to stand in my defense. So I come to tell you He's alive, to tell you that He's right, every tear that falls. Give the Lord some praise. He's so worthy today. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you. 
We are so glad that you, you're with us today. We have so much to praise him for. I'm a little, I'm a little different. I'm a little different. There's there's things about me that some wouldn't understand. When things are just hard for me to talk about, I I choose not to talk about it. If it means not letting someone in. Often I'm finding more and more I can bear (laughs) through the power of the Lord. Things I probably, most people would say I shouldn't bear. Most would say I should let others join in with me. But when it gets just hard to talk about, some of you understand what I'm saying. You know, there's some things when you say it, it becomes real. And as long as you're just praying about it, it's not so real. And I'm finding it harder to tell someone else's story. About a year ago, Taylor was having a lot of trouble. One person I decided to really confide in. Couldn't wrap my mind around 28-year-old being told she needed a pacemaker. I couldn't talk with her about it. Couldn't talk with Iola about it because I couldn't get it out. I hadn't talked to you about it because it was not my story and we got just so many things going on in everyone's families. But I knew I could talk to God about it. Monday, Iola's birthday, her and Taylor went to Raleigh together to see her cardiologist. The joy of my day was getting a text where the doctor is saying that she can wing off of her last heart pill 
and that our heart is fully functioning properly. Hmm. Boy, <laughs> he's good. <laughs> he's good. <laughs> he is good. So, you know, there are things that we'll go through in life that'll just shake us. <laughs> they just shake us. And I'm just shaking with joy. Two weeks she had come off fully this medicine. And in four to six weeks, if nothing has changed other than things getting better, then in two years she'll have an echo and she'll be completely free of cardiac care. We thought we had all of this behind us until COVID hit. She got COVID twice. But God is still in control. And I thank God he's in control. Because the last year he's carried me through this. I couldn't be there for her. I didn't know how. I didn't know how to be daddy. When I couldn't fix it. That's what we're supposed to do, isn't it? Men, daddies, fathers. Supposed to be able to fix it when we can't fix it. The only thing we can do is go to the Lord. That might be our trouble sometimes. Is trying to fix it. And sometimes he'll put us in a place where we know from the get-go we can't fix it. We just have to call on him. Thank you for loving us. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with us. Thank you for the prayers that you pray on behalf of us. God is hearing them. And your love for us isn't taken for granted. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Matthew. Look in chapter 21. I'm going to read two verses. We'll focus on 11 through the message, but we're going to read just two verses. We're going to look in verse 10 and verse 11. Vance Havner said this. We are not going to move this world by criticism of it, nor conforming, conformity to it, but by the combustion within it of lives ignited by the Spirit of God. Let me, let me read that one more time. We are not going to move the world. I think if he could speak to us right now, he would say a better word to use there would be shake. Where we are not going to shake this world by criticism of it, nor conformity to it, but by the combustion within it of lives ignited by the Spirit of God. Let that sink in for just a little bit. Let's look in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 10 and 11. The Bible says, And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? 
So the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. This is God's holy word. God, we, we thank you today. We thank you for your presence filling us in this place. We thank you, God, to know that you are on your throne and your son is by your side, making intercession for those who know you through him. God, we just thank you for knowing that we can call upon you and know that you hear us. We thank you that you see all things and that you know all things and you're in control of all things. Help us, God, in our times of weakness to always lean upon you for you are our strength. Now open our hearts and open our minds as we look to your word and allow your word to penetrate us, God, in such a way to where we will serve you, that we will glorify your name, that we will magnify the name of Jesus. Penetrate hearts in such a way, God, to where if there's someone lost today, they'll cry out, what must I do to be saved? They'll ask the question, who is this? For we know it's Jesus moving. Move, God, and we'll praise you for all that's accomplished. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Today, uh, we all, most of us <laughs> anyway, we all know that today begins Holy Week. Today is what we call Palm Sunday. And this week, it represents Jesus' last physical, earthly week on earth. His triumphal entry into Jerusalem was the very first event of the week. This took place on the very first day of the week. And then and even now, it's still called Palm Sunday. Today's text opens up with Jesus preparing not only to demonstrate that he, that he is the Messiah, the one prophesied to be the Savior of the world, but he was about to shake up lives. As Jesus drew near to Jerusalem, he came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives. He, he, sent, he then sent two disciples into the village with specific instructions. His instructions were detailed to be very clear. His detailed instructions, however, were not common instructions. They were not instructions that would cause people to move with no question. As a matter of fact, he told them immediately that they were to go and find a donkey tied along with a colt. And uh, the next thing they were to do was to loose them and bring them to him. Oh, and if anyone has anything to say about what they're doing, just tell them the Lord has need for them. And they'll send you on your way. Now, if you're being given these instructions, you've got to hear that, that these are very unique particulars that are shared. Very unique particulars. The, the particulars or the details of this exchange has to strike us as being unique. Jesus isn't making a request of his disciples. He wasn't asking if they would like to do this or if they would do this. He wasn't even asking if they would feel comfortable doing this for him. He charges two disciples. He instructs them and his instructions were unique to say the least. They were to go and loosen someone else's donkey and colt and to leave with someone else's donkey and colt. And oh, by the way, if the owner says, what are you doing? The Lord's got need for them. Do you think these disciples that Jesus gave these instructions to were shaken up a little? <laughs> I mean, can, can you imagine them walking into the village and talking to each other? Man, 
Do you really want to go steal someone else's donkey colt? Man, are you ready to throw fists today? You know, they come out here and catch us doing this. Somebody might be fighting. <laughs> oh, y'all are too righteous. <laughs> y'all are too holy. That wouldn't happen. You wouldn't think those things. I got one that might just hit you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I trust the Lord, but I don't know the owner. And I don't trust anyone I don't know. Yeah, that'll resonate with you, won't it? Yeah. You know, preachers often say, you know, I trust, I trust the Lord. I just don't trust the people. And you want me to go and, and, and set my whole livelihood based upon what people are going to do? Well, the Lord will take care of you. Yeah, he will, but people won't. Yeah, we don't trust people, right? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine just how shaken and nervous these guys must have been as they were walking in this village after these unique particulars were shared with them? It has to be a question on our hearts and minds whether we know the answer or not. But, you know, one thing is for certain, unique particulars are common with the Lord. He can go all the way back to Noah's day. You know, it had never rained. They'd never seen water come from the sky and he tells them to build an ark. But we're not going to go that far back. Let's come up a little bit earlier uh, before we'd get all the way back to Noah and just think about those particulars that were shared to Joshua when Israel was coming up to Jericho. You remember that? When when Joshua led the children of Israel out of the wilderness and they crossed the Jordan on dry ground and, and the kings of the Amorites were on the west side of Jordan and the kings of the Canaanites were by the sea and when they heard that the God of Israel had, had dried up the Jordan so Israel could cross, the Bible says their heart melted and there was no spirit in them any longer. The Bible says that the city of Jericho, that they were securely, they were securely shut up because the children because of the children of Israel they were afraid of Israel and no one could go out of Jericho and no one could come in but the Lord told Joshua that he was giving Jericho over to him not only Jericho but its king and its mighty men of valor they would be given into the hands of Joshua and with the city shut tight God told Joshua and the middle war some very unique particulars he told them to to march around the city once for six days and while they're marching he was to have seven priests in front of the ark and carrying trumpets made of ram's horns but on the seventh day on the seventh day the army was to march around seven times this city blowing their trumpets and after marching around the seven times um, on that seventh day then the the people were to give a loud shout and when the, when this shout was heard they were to blast the trumpets and the walls of Jericho would collapse <laughs> and when the city walls would collapse the soldiers were to charge straight into the city and conquer their enemy now does that not sound strange to you is that not a strange way of conquering a city go to the city Take your soldiers, march around once for six days. And on the seventh day, oh, while you're marching around, take the Ark of the Covenant with you ahead of you and have the priest to walk around with it. But on the seventh day, you go around seven times. You blow the horns, you shout, and the walls are going to come down. From a military standpoint, <laughs> I'm sure this strategy just didn't make sense for these men of war. I imagine they were a little shaken by the instructions that were given, but they followed God's unique particulars to the letter. And because they did, they were victorious and they conquered Jericho. I want to ask you a question. Have you received any unique particulars from the Lord that has shaken you? Of course you have. There are many here who have been born again. You're born again. You had received some very unique particulars. But you know, in a crowd this size, I'm, I, I, would, I would bet that there, 
There's some here who's never confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I imagine with the crowd this side, there's probably a few that have believed and confessed, but for some reason or another, they find themselves far from God and have wandered back into a life of sin. But God has given us some unique particulars, some specific details that, that we struggle with in order to be in a right relationship with God. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 through 13, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead then you will be saved for with the heart one believes unto righteousness with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture says whoever believes on him will not be put to shame for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved folks these are very unique particulars for salvation for some of you it shakes you up just to, to know that salvation can be that simple it's hard to believe especially when every religion stresses works you know what you can and you cannot do to be in a right relationship with God it's really the really sad thing is there are Christian churches Christian traditions Christian denominations that, that teach us and teach their, their members that there's a laundry list of things that you have to follow in order to be saved and stay saved but the Bible Bible says that we must believe and we must confess him as Lord and Savior. Some of you believe that you've just gone too far, you ha but you haven't. Some of you believe that you're unlovable, but that's not true. Some, so let me just shake you up a little. Every born again believer has felt that way at some point or another in their life. Every believer has had moments of doubts and feelings of failure, but I like the way Lauren Daigle said it. She shared... Uh, she shared it this way. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. And, and every, every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. I Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Then she cries out to the Lord, remind me once again who I am because I need to know. And because she cried out to the Lord, the Lord shared something with her that I think we all can benefit with. She goes on to say, you say I'm loved when I don't feel a thing. You say I'm strong when I think I'm weak. You say I'm held when I'm falling apart. Uh, and I believe, oh, I believe. You know the great thing about this? She says, when I do don't belong, you say I am yours. Oh, man, to know that when, it, when the world is crashing down around us, when the world says we don't, we've gone too far for anyone to love us, he says if you'll call on him, he'll make you his. Oh, I wonder do you believe? And if you will believe the unique particulars that he gives you in your life, you'll find that the only thing that matters is what he thinks of you. People may say, well, you're foolish to believe that. <laughs> I'm okay for the world to think I'm foolish when the Lord says that I'm faithful. It's okay for the world to think I'm crazy when the Lord says I'm blessed. It's okay for the world to say I'm nothing when the Lord says here is all that I have to give to you. It's what the Lord says is all that matters. He said, if you will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and that God has raised him from the dead and confess him as your Lord and Savior, oh, you shall be saved. Yes, when we follow his unique particulars, there's going to also be an undeniable praise that's given. If we look in this passage, we find some things that take place. And according to the passage, these things took place according to Scripture. It had been prophesied in the Old Testament Scriptures that these very things will take place. Let's notice what took place here. The disciples brought back the donkey and colt, and they honored Jesus by placing... Um, as the Lord by obeying him. The disciples had nothing to give the Lord, but what they did was they gave everything that they have. They took the clothes, the very minimal clothes that they had, and they laid those on the 
donkey or horse because he didn't have a saddle. So they made a saddle for the Lord. They were willing to have what few items that they did own become dirty and smelly as they worshiped and praised the Lord. We need to be aware of the importance of what's actually taking place. Jesus wasn't sitting on a colt riding into Jerusalem while uh, um, Jesus wasn't just sitting there while others were walking. He was actually taking his rightful place as king. As he's going in there, he's showing everyone else that he is king. But he wasn't demonstrating that he was just any king. He was a king of peace. He was riding a young colt rather than riding a conqueror's stallion. He wasn't making any claims of an earthly kingdom. Instead, he was saying that he's coming to save the world through peace not through war folks the multitude received their king as a matter of fact they stripped their clothes and they cut branches and placed the branches and their clothes in the road as Jesus come by and they were shouting Hosanna which means save now or save we pray they cried out the son of David which is the title for the Messiah they shouted bless is he who comes in the name of the Lord which means blessed is he who God sends to save his people. They shouted Hosanna in the highest, which means God save we pray. Thou art in the highest, save now through him whom you have sent. Their praise given to our Lord was undeniable. And we can recall a message in Mark and Luke's gospel that Jesus shares that speaks of a poor widow. This widow serves as an example for us about how we are to genuinely praise and worship the Lord. She gave all that she had. Folks, this wasn't as much about money as we like to think. This is more, or it's not as much about money as swindlers who preach this text often would like us to think. God didn't need her money. He owns the cattle of a thousand hills and the fullness thereof. He didn't need a dime from this widow, much less her last two mites. But this was about genuine worship. This was about us seeing that it's that it's Jesus who meets our need. Not our ability, not our possessions, not our pocketbooks, but it's Jesus who meets our needs. And when that becomes a reality, us, we will give him an undeniable praise. We'll give him undeniable worship. And that's exactly what that woman done. She gave everything that she had in worship to him. Folks, it's it's undeniable that Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the only begotten son of God is worthy of our worship and praise. He will, we will all experience times of struggle. We will all experience times of confusion. We'll all experience times of heartache. There will be times when we don't know where to turn, but if we trust and obey, we will experience his power and his presence. And when his, and when we experience his power and presence, we will desire to worship and praise him so that we proclaim him to be king of kings and lord of lords. It just happened a few minutes ago if for some reason the song spoke to your heart and as it spoke to your heart you realize Jesus Christ is alive and well he's king of kings and lord of lords and we began to praise and worship but now you know I'm not so sure we understand fully what we're actually saying when we say we recognize him as king of kings and lord of lords What we're actually saying is that he's king of our hearts. (laughs) We got too many kings in our life. And he's going to be the king. I mean, we're saying, when we say he's king of kings and lord of lords, he's king of our heart. He's lord of our lives. We're saying that we will put nothing 
or no one before him. We're saying that we will crucify our flesh daily and follow him. We're saying that we'll pick up our cross and follow him. We will give him ultimate power and authority to use us in whatever way that he desires for his glory. And when we make him king of our hearts, even when he's given us unique particulars to follow, the genuineness of our praise and worship will be undeniable. Be undeniable. <laughs> uh, I'm confused, you have. I hope it's good to you because you've gotten awfully quiet on me. <laughs> when we have followed the unique particulars and the, that he has given and we... And we've given him undeniable praise. We'll have answers for the underlying question. The Bible says that when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, the city was moved. The word moved in the Greek is translated shaken. Seeing the word shaken here, King, we can sense that the people were astonished. You know, when we think of the word moved, we think of something just moving into another direction. But these folks were shaken. You know, we can often be shaken by fear. I mean, how many of you haven't heard a banging at the door in the middle of the night and the first thing you do is reach for either a weapon, I'm talking about a gun, or a bat? Before going to the door, you were shaken, shaken out of your sleep by fear. Yeah, that can happen in our lives. Truth is, often we are shaken by fear. And I imagine that's what had happened with the Romans during this time. Jesus is entering into Jerusalem and there are Romans all around because Rome controlled uh, the providence and and as he's coming in and they're crying out, Hosanna <laughs> to the highest. They're giving praise and worship to Jesus. I imagine they were shaken up by fear. I imagine they were shaken as they feared that a popular uprising might be in the making. I imagine the Herodians, those who uh, were the ruling party of the Jewish community. I imagine they were shaken by fear of that. Well, you know, if he's king, then I'm going to lose my position. Oh, don't we get, that, that, doesn't that happen to us from time to time? How about on your job? How about on your job when, when someone new has been hired and you find out they got higher credentials than you have and they're starting off a little bit below you and then you want to undermine everything that they're doing because you're afraid that they're going to step over you. How about that at church? <laughs> Do we ever get shaken by fear that because we've brought someone else in that things aren't going to look the way they've always looked? Because we've allowed someone else to become a member of the church, now they have a voice and, and it's not going to go as easily as it's always been before. Maybe, maybe someone else that, that doesn't look like us has, become, has come in leadership and because they're in leadership, we look and we think that things are going to change. I'm not going to get to have my position or my way. Or maybe just we can get shaken up by fear of losing positions. I imagine the Pharisees, they were shaken up to new depths of envy and malice. As the multitude worshiped and praised this carpenter's son, not a biblical scholar, but a carpenter's son. Now they're worshiping and praising him where they've been They've come down through the family lineage to, to be the, the priests and the Levites and the, and the chiefs among the people. Oh, how does it feel when someone from outside of the right family comes in? Does that bring, us, bring fear upon us sometime? <laughs> Listen, they were so shaken that they asked, who is this? But it would appear that the people, 
that the people there, they were shaken also, but they weren't shaken by fear. They were shaken with excitement and expectation as they were convinced that this is the day of their liberation. They, they were convinced that, that, that this is the Messiah. They were convinced that he was the one that they had prophesied about. They were convinced that this Jesus of Nazareth was coming in as to be their king. Oh, they were shaken with excitement and expectation. You know, the Lord Jesus is still shaking up lives today, isn't he? He's still shaking up lives. There are many of you who, at a young age, trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And, and all you can remember is serving the Lord. But I'd venture to say that he's even shaken your lives from time to time. I'm sure you've experienced times when your faith got weak and, and out of nowhere he demonstrated just how real he, really, he is. Not only real in heaven, but also real on earth and in your life. Yeah, some of you, I'm sure, have been, have, there have been times when in your, that your life didn't pan out the way you wanted it. Or you think back and you say, well, if my life had planned out the way I wanted it, I'd be in a mess. But God took control of my life and he led me in a different direction. And it just shakes you up to think about where it could have been. Amen. Well, what about the other side of that? Some of you probably look back and you know, you know exactly where you're headed versus where you are. And it just shakes you up to know. Just to know. Where you could have been. You know, what shakes me up is to think that I answered the call of ministry at the age of 30 when I should have answered at the age of 15. It just shakes me up. The problem was I didn't know what was going on at 15. And then I go to thinking, well, God knew what he was doing by not allowing me to know what's going on. But it become very real that it, after I announced my call, that that's what was happening when I was 15 and 16. But I was just so girl crazy. I was the typical 15-year-old. I was the typical athlete. I was the typical guy in, that walked around in school thinking I had it all together when I know that if I would have answered a call then, I'd have probably destroyed the ministry for myself. Yeah. It shakes me up to know that God knew what he was doing. And I'm so glad he knew because I wouldn't have known what I was doing. Some of you may be shaken right now. Some of your lives may be shook up right now. Just maybe you thought that he would not or he could not love you. But you just can't get away from the fact that he continues to pull you out of the mess that you've made in your life. Maybe he's calling you right now and you can't understand why he would want a relationship with you. Well, you're not alone. Most of us have been there. And I want to encourage you today just to lay aside your fear. Lay aside your doubt. Just for this moment. As every head's bowed and every eye's closed. Instead of being shaken by fear and doubt, why not be shaken with excitement? The excitement of becoming a child of God. Oh, I, I assure you that if you are willing to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we'll rejoice with you. Why not be shaken with expectation? The expectation of receiving the peace of God, the word when you look into this world, the chaos of the world doesn't begin to control you because the peace of God is carrying you. In case you didn't know, it's Jesus who's calling. It's Jesus who's calling. As they begin to sing this song of invitation, will you answer his call? If you believe Jesus is the Son of God, if you believe he come to this sin-cursed world, live the sinless life, if you believe that he died on an old rugged cross for your sin. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead. You can be saved today if you're willing to confess him as your Lord and Savior.
Would you today? gambled for the road he wore He chose a worldly trail Not thinking about eternity As the soldiers drove the nails Will we learn from what they done Or make the same mistake be all the world, my child. Which one will you take? Will you come today? I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. I tried these worldly pleasures and have failed. Out to you. When you see the gates of heaven and you hear the master say, Me, all the world, my child, which one will you take? As the pages of my life have turned, time has rolled. Greatest things that I have done They're not gonna matter on that day Oh, my earthly treasures That I have laid away They're gonna be just a memory This you hear me say Will you take him today? I'll take Jesus. He'll take you if you'll call upon him. I tried these worldly pleasures and they fail. When you see the gates of heaven and you hear the master say, Me, all oh, the world. Child, which one will you take? Oh, the world will let you down, but I'll Jesus will hold Jesus. you. He'll pick you up and he'll hold you. I'll take Jesus. I tried these worldly pleasures and they fail. When you see the gates of heaven. Me, all the world, my child, which one will you take? Me, all the world, my child, which one will you take? Amen. Amen. Have you settled with your decision today? It's, it's either him or it's the world. That's right. The world will do everything it can to crush you. But Jesus will do everything he can to bless you. Is this world worth losing everything? I assure you, Jesus is worth gaining everything. Amen. We thank you. We thank you all for being here today. We pray that God has spoke to your hearts in one way or another. I pray that you have been encouraged to, to share Jesus with the world. If you know him as your Lord and Savior, I'd encourage you 
share him with those that you love who don't know him. And if it shakes them up a little bit, that's okay. Let them make a decision, either to receive him or reject him. Let them know you love them well enough that you want them to make a decision. Because it's the most important decision we'll ever make. As we do, thank you for being here. We thank you for taking time to worship with us today. But it is the first Sunday of the month. Uh, I imagine they they remembered. (laughs) It's the first Sunday of the month. April seems to be a busy month. And uh, I imagine there was a lot of farmers who were anxiously awaiting wives to have their children (laughs) so they could get back in the field with them as the crops were getting ready to start coming. So uh, saying that, is there anyone whose birthday is in the month of April? Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Do we have any anniversaries in the month of April? Happy anniversary to you, happy anniversary to you, happy anniversary, God bless you, happy anniversary to you.